Hey, happy Monday. It's Masters Week. Welcome to the Wise Guys. It's one of the great weeks of the year with the number one BYU sports live stream show in the entire world because we go to the whole world. That makes us number one. Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, how's your week? It's good. I, you have your green, it's not a, it's sort of a green jacket. It's more of a green it's zip. It's the closest to a green jacket it's a I'm going to have. Quarter zip, but it is, you must have gotten that. It somebody, was from the, uh, Augusta National yeah, you, you can Shop. Only, you can only get that gear when you're there. So I have, I, I wore a hat golfing the other day. Yeah. Um, on a, a Augusta National. I saw that. Hat. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I wear oh, it right. often, but it seemed like together. the week. Dave and I went golfing together last week. Yeah. And it, yeah. Was, it was nice out the there. The course damage was minimal, and yeah. we got yeah, we, we got right through it. Hey, follow us on YouTube. Uh, we're going to put the link in the chat. Subscribe. Uh, it's all free, and we're also live on Facebook, Twitch, and YSGuysGuy.com. Everybody's in the Philippines in early. Oh, How about yeah, that? Right out good. of the gate. They Farmington, last week. Las Vegas. Uh, thank you for being with us. Tucson, good to have you here. Uh, Winnipesaukee, Lake Winnipesaukee. Alan, nice job. Nice. Yeah. It's, the whole world well, checks people are getting in. in. They're getting in early before before the national championship game. Yeah, because right? we got we got plenty got of time before that. On. Hey, if you have now these folks that are all in, I know that they've all uh, subscribed at wiseguys.com, But make sure if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe, and then you'll get our e weekly email that has highlights from the show. All of our past interviews are there, including folks like Ty Detmer and Steve Young and Danny Ainge. Wally Joyner, Marie Osmond, Glenn Kozlowski, Jimmer Fredette, Kyle Van Noy, Sherry Dew, um, you, you just name it. John, by the way, last week. You name it, they're on this show. They're, they've been on the show. If they're anybody, they've been on the show. Jay's from Vernal, uh, Scott from Montana. Good to have you with us on the Wise Guys tonight. We got TJ Woods. He's the offensive line coach, brand new one, running game coordinator. He's going to be sitting in studio with us in just a little bit. Yeah, that'll be we got fun. a lot of questions for him. Oh, yeah, we do. A lot from spring ball and, and about his experience so far and what's going to be different next year. It's going to be great. Great. We'll talk a little bit about the futures for Zach Wilson and Keaton Slovis, two former BYU quarterbacks, and what, they're, what they've got going in the NFL. Hey, and BYU baseball's Hawaiian punch, Kahio Aloy and Keone Painter with us right after the Cougars took down Texas in Austin. Yeah, how about that? That they, was an awesome weekend. They, they, they take the series down there in Austin, no less. Yeah. Texas takes a lot of pride. They, they think they're pretty good in baseball. I have a really good friend that was an All-American there, and he thinks they're great. The, yeah. So if they're great, they think they're great no matter what. If they think they're great, if they're great, <laughs> then then BYU's better. So we got so that we got the guys in tonight. Just finished up practice yeah. and have them over. Hey, hey it's how be about awesome. how about the Kentucky basketball head job being open? Yeah. What what's up with that? Yeah, it's just surprised like, me. It, so Calipari leaves and takes the Arkansas job. Now that doesn't seem like a job you take, but maybe after all these years, one national championship, the pressure is so intense. You know, they they think you should win them like UConn wins them. Oh, maybe they should. <laughs> but but they feel like, you know, the Kentucky fans feel like they should win a national championship every year. Maybe the the pressure has just gotten so much that, that he decided, I'm going to go to Arkansas, where if I get to an Elite Eight, everybody thinks it's great. But but what does that mean for Mark Pope? That's his alma mater. He, We're going to talk about that. Captain on a national championship team there at Kentucky. Um, he is on some lists yeah. already. Yeah, we'll dive into that in just a little bit and sure. give us our opinion. Yeah. We'll give our opinion on that. We'll get yours as well. On our live stream, BYU baseball thirteen and fifteen, up to six and nine now in the Big Twelve. Their first season in the Big Twelve. They just took two of three in Austin against the Texas Longhorns. Thursday they won seven of five. Uh, one of our guests had a two-run single, yep. uh, Keone Painter. Friday Texas beat BYU four to three, but BYU had some chances. They could have got that one yeah, Friday. Yeah. And then Colin Ruder hit three home runs Saturday. What in the world? Beat yeah. the Horns seven to five. That's huge. Yeah, that's really big. And to go on the road and to take care of the, of the horns. Um, this week, BYU's at Utah. Um, Tuesday, that's tomorrow night. Are you doing that one? No. Because no, that's that's out on the road. That's yeah. a Pac-12 network game. And BYU Radio is, is going to be doing I know you don't have that one. Baylor's at BYU Thursday through Friday and Saturday. Uh, Thursday, Friday, both at 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Saturday at 1 Mountain Time. And all of those games, the home games are all going to be on ESPN+. Plus. Um, you and Gary Shady calling that one though, right? Yeah, we got a busy week yeah, ahead. Yeah, so you and Gary. I, oh man, I was going to bring a book for you to take to Gary. By the way, we'll just My, swing it by the house. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it by. Big Twelve standings: the top ten qualify for the Big Twelve championships in Arlington, Texas, in May, at the end of May. BYU right now is in eleventh at six and nine. 
just behind Baylor, who's five and seven. And again, that three game series this week. Oh, yeah. So this is an important one. Two Big Twelve teams in the top twenty five, uh, and and they're not. They don't include Texas. They don't include Oklahoma. They don't include TCU. Or, but they do include UCF at number seventeen and Oklahoma State number twenty one. Right. We thought there'd be more, yeah. but this TCU right now is in twelfth uh, place. And they were the preseason favorites, so something's up with that. Yeah. Well, and we, we saw a little bit of that in basketball, too, where some of the favorites weren't so favorite. And some of the teams that people didn't think were going to be that great, including BYU, were, were much, much better. Let's bring in our guys, yeah. our first guest tonight. They can talk to us all about this they league. brought us some island flavor to the BYU <laughs> roster, both from the island of Maui. Our pleasure to welcome Kihio Aloy, who's typically the designated hitter, and starting outfielder Keone Painter. Welcome, guys, to the Wise Guys. That's Kihio, and this is Keone. Aloha, guys. Aloha. <laughs> and, and both from the island of Maui, as you mentioned, is there a better place in, in Hawaii than Maui? That, that is my first. Like, I feel like it's the best of every world in Hawaii whenever we've been over it's there. It's just the best place. And do you, do you, would you guys uh, concur that, that, that that's the best place in Hawaii, Maui? 100%. I agree. Can we get that, Miranda? Can we get that mic up? If uh, when you guys get introduced in class, do you wait for everyone to explain where they grew up and then you go i grew up in maui yeah and that pretty much takes the, everyone's so like oh right yeah they're just like they're just kind of like oh hawaii like it's kind of it's kind of a surprise at first yeah. what was it like growing up there uh when we go to visit you know after a few days that island's pretty small but for folks who live there what what's it like growing up on an island it's a small island uh you get to know everybody for sure and Everybody's like family back at home. Yeah. Always out there taking care of you, whatever you need. And then when you grow up in Hawaii, especially in Maui, the water just becomes part of who you are, right? You guys spend a lot of time in the ocean and, and, and doing those kinds of sports. Were you both surfers growing up? Oh, uh, I did not surf. You didn't surf? I bodyboard a lot, but not really surfing. Same. Yeah. Same. Really? Not a surfer. I expected uh, both of you guys to be out on boards. Uh, first, time, you... first time I tried surfing, I, <laughs> I hit the reef. and That was uh, it? Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> now, did you have to eat fish growing up? Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. yeah. It's probably the best thing for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what they say. And you'd go catch fish and then eat it. Mm -hmm. Is that how that went down? Yeah. 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 And, and both grew up playing baseball. Did you play other sports growing up in, in, in Hawaii? Uh, I played soccer uh, to like middle school, like seventh grade. And then, and then focused on baseball yeah. after that. How about mm -hmm. you? I played about basketball and football, soccer too, throughout elementary. As yeah. as I went on to go to middle school and high school, it kind of it kind of dialed down to one, which is baseball. You know, back in the day, one of the reasons why um, a lot of people in Hawaii don't like BYU is whether well, two of you are sitting here on this show in Provo tonight. <laughs> they got mad of all their athletes leaving to come over here to play. And uh, back in the early 80s, their best football players had come over and play. Yeah, and we, played on Blaine's team. We, got, we yeah. got the player of the year every year, the Hawaii player of the year in football every year for like five straight years. So then we'd go over there and we'd go, why does everyone hate why us they, so why much? Why do they hate BYU The so church is, is huge over here and all this and that. They were mad because um, BYU would come over and take you guys and bring you over here. <laughs> Did you guys sense that growing up? Um, not, not, not really. really no. Yeah? Because the church is a big part back home so yeah it's not it's kind of like a shock people would want to come here too and they yeah don't really care yeah, my my uh my freshman year in my recruiting class we got the number one rated player and the number two rated player from <laughs> from the state of hawaii kurt govea and lucky hemuli both came to byu they really hated us after that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, you would go over there you could feel it you're mm -hmm. walking in, you're like, hey, we're, we're on the broadcast team. We're, we're, yeah. we're going to say good things about you guys. Be nice like, to yeah. us, but they, they could not do it. Um, how sweet is it to go into Austin and take down Texas? I don't care if Texas is number one in the country or number 359. What, how, how much fun was that? It felt good. I mean, we were off to like a rough four games before that, four or five yeah. games before that. And I think taking that series at Austin was really big for us and a big motivator to kind of push us to want more. The last time we were down there, um, the feedback coming back was that uh, Texas would like to chat a lot. They liked, they were high and mighty. They were this and that. And BYU was the low of the lows. And Texas won, and that made it worse. Mm -hmm. Well, this time, 
you guys won and then and then skip town what was the mood like from the longhorns as uh, as they look up there and watch colin ruder hit his third home run um they were kind of i think they were kind of in shock but they kind of started to like a little talking back back at us and um it kind of just motivated us to just go out there and beat them because they just think they're bigger and they just think they're better and we just kind of went out there and proved what what, what what kind of facility do they have down there do they get a good crowd in this facility because they always brag about they have great facilities down there <clears throat> Yeah, it was it was a good facility. It was a really nice facility. Um, they, they had a big crowd, so it got loud sometimes. But um, overall, it was it was just a good experience. Well, you went three for eleven, a couple of runs, made some big plays out in the field. You were three for seven with three runs driven in, scored a few times. As Stone Cushing picked up save six and seven. Again, Ruder had a really good series. It felt like all over the lineup instead of just one spot. Everyone was contributing, which is the key moving forward, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's very big for everyone, one through nine, to kind of contribute and put runs on the board. And also our pitching staff kind of putting zeros up there against the yeah. other team. And the starter's been tough, right? And the bullpen's been great. It's just been some bad luck. Yeah. Yeah. And just some plays just didn't, didn't go our way or some things didn't go our way, which is how the game works and just how things go. How How different is it? You know, we always talk about the transition from high school, whatever, from high school basketball to Division One basketball. What's the transition like for you guys, and how different is it playing in high school in Maui to the level of competition and what the game is like now as you're playing Division One level in a P5 conference? Um, I think just overall, like, the games, the amount of games played in the season, it's just kind of like you have to really focus on your recovery and your body. I think the talent, too, is, like, on another level you're facing – 90 plus every day instead of like 80 or like 70 so it's just um it was kind of a hard transition at first and then you kind of just go into the flow and get used to it you've had a little time because you had a red shirt year mm -hmm. separating high school from from the pitching you're seeing this year you're straight in uh every time you go up and we've talked about in the, in the broadcast every time you go up to the plate to face a new pitcher it's an education uh, at, at this level, isn't it? Especially in conference play, and how different is it from knocking around high school pitchers last year? Uh, I'd say the game just speeds up a lot faster. Games played at a higher level, the game's just going to get on you much faster. You just got to find ways to slow it down. How do you slow it down? Uh, I like to go and take a couple deep breaths, you know, kind of don't think and just do. Go out there and kind of help my team win. Is the biggest difference the pitching? Is there, like, facing the pitching that's kind of good every single game? And how do you manage the, the higher level of pitching? I'd say it's kind of a factor of everything. Pitching is probably one of the bigger things. Uh, facing a lot more velocity, a lot, a lot more different pitches with higher spin rates, and just finding ways to be able to adjust to those pitches and hit it hard to any, any place of the ballpark. Good to have Houston, Texas with us on our uh, live stream. La Roca, Baja, California in with us tonight. Um, this is kind of a cool show because everyone gets to see you out of uniform, uh, answering questions a little bit different than what you get in a post-game interview as we visit with Cahio Aloy and Keone Painter on The Wise Guys tonight. Live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and YSGuys.com. So you guys are very different ball players. Uh, speed, defense power so let's describe uh your games but i'd like you to describe his and then blaine will have we'll have kahio describe yeah, yeah i like Keone. it so let's break this guy down um i mean uh, he's just a hitter pretty much like he can just hit the ball anywhere of the field he can hit it for power he can hit for average he can just put the ball in play um he's a big rbi guy for us too and getting runners in and so i think overall he's just He's one of our better hitters on our team, and he's able to see the pitch and see the ball really well, which is um, something that makes him such a good hitter. Isn't it a bit uncommon for a freshman to be able to do all that? You lead the team in RBI with 22. Yeah, it's, yeah it is. Uh, but, I mean, it's no doubt like about Cujillo and him coming in and doing this because, I mean, he's worked his whole life for this, and he's proven and, proven and shown in high school, and he's doing it right now that he, he can do it. So are you, so are you surprising yourself at all? Uh, no, I think I prepared myself enough and yeah. worked hard enough to kind of go out there and do what I do. 
So what 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 about Keone's game? Like, how, give us the scouting report on on his game. Uh, he's a solid defender in the outfield for sure. He's got speed. He can run. He can track down balls and at the plate. As long as he puts it on the ground or somewhere in the field, he's more than likely to be on first base. Yeah, you had some big catches in that Texas series. Yeah, running back, putting your hand up, pulling him in. Did any of those surprise you? Um, no, not not really. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I think they uh, I think they surprise all of us when we see the ball leave the bat so fast. Mm -hmm. And there's so much ground out there. I mean, people, it's like an ocean of green out there covering center. And you've been in center. You've been in left. Have you been in right too? Or uh, I've been in center and right. Center and right. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot of ground to cover. Yeah. Coming off the bat, you've got a millisecond to decide kind of, am I going left? Am I going right? Am I mm -hmm. retreating? Yeah. Am I charging up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I think just coming off the bat, I think you just have to see the pitcher throw the ball all the way. Like if you see it up, if you see it go all the way and you see it go off the bat, it's kind of just reaction from there. You can just go. So based on where the pitch is, you can tell where the where the batter's going to drive the ball and you can get a jump on it. Yeah, it's all, and then our, our coaches do a good job too in putting us in the correct spots or positions if you have to go on oppo, opposite side or if you have to go on pull side. So that helps too with um, positioning in the outfield. So how did you guys survive the winter? Yeah, uh, snow's over here. It doesn't snow over there. Yeah, well, way so up on the, up, up on the on the volcano does, doesn't it? it yeah, but it's it barely. Uh, barely, okay. Barely, yeah. Uh, I'd say <laughs> at first it took time to kind of like take it in and be like, okay, this is like, this is like cold and like I should start <laughs> wearing some like layering up or this and that. <laughs> but I want to say I, I got used to it pretty quick. Driving okay in it? Yeah. I mean, being out there on the baseball field every day, whether it's 40 degrees, 30 degrees, I mean, I just found ways to kind of adapt and kind of keep going. You had an extra year, so you knew what this winter was going to yeah. be because you had one. And last year was a big one. Yeah, last last year's winter was rough. <laughs> yeah, he, got, he got off pretty easy yeah. this winter compared yeah. to last winter. This was, it was brutal last year. <laughs> yeah. So we were talking to you before before we all came on the air, and you guys actually knew each other growing up. Like, talk about the relationship and, and how you interacted as you were growing up. Um, so all growing up, I played with his brother, uh, Viva. And so he was just one year younger than me, and um, his dad actually coached me all through my young years and all middle school years. So um, it was honestly just a good experience just learning from his dad and being around them and just having that environment around me. Yeah, how about you? Uh, first of all, I'd like to say shout out to my dad <laughs> and my brother all the way down in Arkansas. Keep killing it, bro. <laughs> uh yeah i mean i was one or one or two year two years younger than keone but just always being at the baseball field surrounding myself with like people like my dad my brother and my brother's teammates it kind of like it kind of taught me and i kind of learned certain things and picked up on on the game and how it should be played two non-surfers mm -hmm. as we've come to know yeah i mean i i think for us it was like we didn't really we would go to the beach and all that, but we didn't really pick up any other hobbies because we were just basically doing baseball every day. So yeah, you guys were you guys were dialed in. And baseball, I mean, even here in in Utah, where it's not a warm weather um, climate where you can play year round, they still go inside and hit. You guys do that during the winter in the indoor practice facility. Baseball, when you decide that that's what you're going to do, you kind of have to do it year round, don't you? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. tell us your. There's got to be a spear fishing story or something. As you guys have uh, grown up eating fish that you've caught from the from the ocean, what's your best fish story? Uh, my best fish story is probably going to the beach with my family, and we were out shore uh, shore fishing, just casting, seeing what we catch, and yeah. I about snapped my line about three times in a row, and then after the third time, I was like, "That's it, I'm done." <laughs> so after that, I just watched my the rest of my family just fish. You were done fun. bringing them in. Well, yeah. did you snap it on a snag, or did you like hook into like something a great that was so big or what? It's just like a snag, a hook, a bunch of things. <laughs> you you were one and done. That was it. Yeah. What about you? Um, I would go fishing when I was younger. I would go fishing with my papa all the time. He would take the boat out and we'd go deep sea fishing. Oh, uh, so you'd go off the coast yeah, a bit? Never again, though. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's rough out there. Yeah, right? yeah, it's scary. 
Mm-hmm. You, did you bring in any sharks or what? No, we brought in a. You brought in a uh, a fish. I don't know how big it was. I forgot what fish it was, but yeah. And so you guys didn't surf, but you you did. You call it bodyboard or boogie board? Which you do? I mean, uh, same thing. Bodyboard, boogie board. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I remember back on Oahu, like we'd go over, um, and we'd be watching locals, and and they were body surfing, but they had McDonald's trays. <laughs> it's like, did they go to McDonald's and get those trays and come over here and use it to? And, uh, and sure enough, they did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My papa was telling me a story that he used to do it on the shovel, too. It's just a shovel. A <laughs> uh, shovel. But, like, uh, it's just something to cut into the water yeah. and to steer with, right? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, it's a Monday night. When, when we think of growing up in, in Maui, on the island of Maui, on a Monday night, it's Monday night, everyone's going to the beach with a big bonfire and just, just hanging out? Or was it just baseball practice and going home getting something to eat and going to bed yeah pretty much <laughs> really yeah i mean the beach was like a, a bonus just mm-hmm. going out and spending family time just bonding having that having that day out of the week where you can just release and just let everything go and just not think about anything yeah now you on sundays you told us that you guys saw each other a lot because you're in the same ward yeah we're in the same ward all the whole time you were growing up mm-hmm. yeah. yes yeah yeah so you guys have known each other the, your whole lives pretty much yeah right? <laughs> There yeah. you go. That's cool. And how random is it that you're both here as teammates yeah. and starting lineup tomorrow night and all weekend? Yeah, it's crazy. It's cool. It's cool to see. It's cool to see both of us just kind of grow up and then both come to BYU and do this thing together. How has your BYU experience been? What have you liked most about it? Uh, so far, it's so good. I mean, I'd just say the weather was one of the bigger factors for me. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, for me, it's it's been really good. I I would say the weather weather too. Nothing else but the weather. But yeah, that's it. So the wet the weather's a challenge, and everything else is great. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> BYU freshman Kahio Oloi and redshirt freshman Keone Painter on the Wise Guys today, both from the island of Maui, and appreciate some of the comments on our live stream. Um, when we think of Maui now, we think of those fires and Lahaina, which many of us from here have been to. Uh, vacationing over the years and much of where we ate and stayed has burned to the ground. What, what was that like as, as uh, native uh, Hawaiians seeing that happen to your island? Uh, it was rough actually getting back, t- back home and actually seeing what actually happened. It was kind of like heartbreaking for sure. Just yeah. seeing all the homes and just a, a lot of people and, all these houses and just all that being overtaken by the fire. It was just, it was one of those things where Maui as a whole kind of came together and kind of worked on picking each other up and ask, asking each other for support, which was really good. I mean, without the local support from one another, I don't think we'd be as strong as we we would be, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that same for me. I, it was kind of, I was kind of at shock first. Um, I did not think it was going to, I did not think that was going to happen. And it was kind of a, everybody just got together and we kind of showed aloha to Lahaina. And we uh, came together with all our support and people volunteered to help go out there. And um, I think that was, the, that made us stronger as a community. Lahaina strong. The um, the pictures that I I thought were most um, ironic, stunning was uh, uh, the city, the community there, literally on fire, and the waves were just coming in like it was just like they do. Mm-hmm. They just come no matter what. So here's this island surrounded by water that's that's on fire, and that's it's like seeing a boat on fire at the lake when you're surrounded by water and and no one can put the boat out. Um, and and I, I thought of that. There was there was one that one beach shot of of just the waves coming in like they always do, and with so much water right there, but no one could get the fire out. Yeah, it was it was hard. It was just the conditions that day were really bad. It didn't help put out the fire at all. Yeah. So did you guys? What high school is over there? Would you have played against kids from that area? Yes, mm-hmm. Lahaina Luna. Lahaina Luna. Lahaina Luna. And both your teams had come through and play them. Yeah, well, we all played at one stadium, but like a lot of teams would go there and play at their at their stadium, football stadium. So you knew a lot of kids, a lot of folks oh, yeah. displaced from that. And what's the latest on on the recovery? If do you know, uh, I don't I haven't really seen know for much. Sure. I think it's more of just rebuilding and kind of 
rebuilding infrastructure and kind of building homes and just finding ways for the people that did lose their homes and yeah. much other things to have them have a place to stay or mm -hmm. something like that. It does teach you a lesson of how quick things can change in life. Huh? Yeah. You just never expect that to happen. Just like you wake up every day and you expect to go through a day like you went through all the other days and, um, and, and things change uh, so quickly and, the wind and the, the fire and it just changed a, a community that all of us have known our lives and bam different yeah i think that was that was really big a big uh factor and just i think it just helped our community kind of get together and just kind of be one big su support system you know uh for those that were in need and like for the families that were missing everybody back at home was was really helping to kind of figure out who it, who's where and what they need, if they need food, water, yeah. a place to stay, just always being out there looking out for one another. Yeah, and I think you mentioned it too, that this the coming together, uh, sadly it takes sad things sometimes to bring folks together, but, but we do come together. Yeah, I mean, Maui is always a strong community. Like we always, Lahaina was a really strong community. And um, I think this just made it even stronger and it made everybody even closer. So, I mean, it's just, yeah, I was sad what happened, and it, but it was a good, something good came out of it where people came closer and everybody, um, we showed aloha to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I'm interested. You, you both mentioned the weather was a big challenge. Um, and even though you were in the same ward growing up, you went to different high schools, right? Um, but you both chose you both chose to come to BYU. I, I'm interested to know what the decision making process was for you. Why you know why BYU, BYU for you? Why BYU for you? I mean, I'm I'm part of the church, so that's a one reason why. I mean, and the coaching staff here, the facility here, um, it's kind of just the environment that I'm in, and uh, the people that kind of surround yourself with at, on the baseball team. It uh, really helped my decision to come here. I'd say the same thing. It felt like a place I could call home. Isn't it interesting that as young guys, you come here and, and you're getting started and the person you marry is probably walking around you on campus, just haven't met her yet. But this is the setting where a lot of your life's decisions are going to be made that will impact the rest of, of your life. And, and so just getting here, number one is, uh, uh, an accomplishment and a credit to both of you because this is the setting where uh, a lot of the rest of your decisions are going to originate from. I don't know if that makes it scary walking on campus tomorrow, but... <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know about getting married, but just... Yeah, but... Well, yeah, we're not saying this week. We got four games this week. We don't have time for that this week. But this is where it happens, and hey, that's exciting. You don't even have time to date right now. Oh. It's in season, right? Oh. So... That's cool. All right, we've got five questions for you, and we'll get you on your way. BYU freshman Kahio Aloy and redshirt freshman Keone Painter uh, grew up in the same ward over in Maui, and now they're on the same roster here in Provo, Utah. Uh, Blaine, you ready to work them through yeah, five? Yeah, so, so we'll have, we'll, I'll ask a question, and you'll each answer. And these are just off the top of your head. It helps us get to know you a little bit and, and all the folks out around the world listening in or watching. Plus, we're going to document it yeah, we're and documenting. revisit it later. Yeah, and if they're terrible answers, we're going to let you know. No, <laughs> so, okay, your favorite sports movie. Let's start with you. Uh, Sandlot. Sandlot. Classic. Um, oh. Oh. Mm. Probably Moneyball. Moneyball, oh, oh, yeah. That's another good one. Two good baseball. The Sandlot, by the way, Almost the entire film was filmed here in Utah. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah. 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 Cool. Figured that uh, out. Hey, ask, uh, ask Keone the next one so that uh, yeah. he doesn't get all that extra yeah. time to come up with the <laughs> yeah. answer. So favorite singer or band? Uh, Molly. Molly? Maoli. Oh, mm. Maoli. How do you spell mm. it? M-A-O-L-I. I have to look that one up? Maoli. Maoli. Mm. What kind of music? It's reggae. Oh, so reggae. Mm. Yeah. All right. It's like okay. a Hawaiian reggae. Nice. Mm. So... I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that one. You know I will. I know you will. He knows I will. I'll I go look that. Will. I'll go up Maoli. I'll go look it up. So Common Kings. I, I thought they were from Hawaii with all their with kind of their reggae Hawaiian. Mm. They're from California. Yeah. <laughs> there's like there, there's just different types of reggae. So. Yeah. Very disappointing. I wanted them to be from Hawaii. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, fa Fiji. Favorite. Fiji. Yes. Just like F I G J I. Yes. And what kind of is that? 
Hawaiian reggae. Hawaiian reggae. Hawaiian reggae. The kind of music we hear when we walk out of the Hilton out there, is that what it is? Yeah. Just the, okay. So, yeah, so, right. which, hey, I love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look them both up. So, so this is a follow-up to that question. I'm adding a question, by the way, Dave. Yeah. What would be your walk-up song? Um, do you have one? Do they, do they well, do that at BYU? Your yeah, walk-up song? Yeah. Do it's um, make, make Them Bum Then. It's not by Mooli, but it's uh, it's like a reggae song. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That's how you roll. What's, yeah, yours? what's yours? Same thing. Uh, murderation. Uh, murderation beanie man and i forget who the other artist was when you okay. when you said I'm, this is what i want for my walk-up song did they go uh how are we supposed to find that oh uh, no did they know they, 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 they just it. get it yeah oh, they knew. Well, well, he knew beanie man <laughs> <laughs> okay fiji i want to know i want to know if tj when he comes on the first thing I'm at, does he know beanie man i'm sure that tj knows beanie man We'll ask him. He's no, he says no. no. He says no. He's in the green room. He says no. No beanie man for okay. Dude. All right, okay. next one. Favorite breakfast cereal? I would toast crunch. All right. Okay. Oh, uh, Captain Crunch right now. Yeah. Captain it's Crunch. Captain's that's classic. That's That'll be a that's classic his. your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Never, never can fail with Captain <laughs> Crunch. All right. Your favorite. Well, your favorite baseball moment doesn't have to be a BYU. Your favorite baseball moment. We'll start with you. Favorite baseball moment ever. Hmm. I would say when I was um, in middle school, we went to Little League World Series, uh, regionals, the regionals in San Bernardino. Yeah. I would say that playing in over there was pretty fun. How I close did you moment. get to the show? Uh, we were in the semis to go into the championship to make it to the Little League World Series. Oh, wow. Nice. That's yeah. very cool. That's cool. Mm. Uh, I'd say playing the state tournament, state championship with my brother. High school. Oh, and, and the, partly because you got to play it with your brother, right? Yeah. Very cool. And how old's your brother? Uh, Is he older or younger? He's older. He's a sophomore. Okay. Yeah. And, right. and they're second. The, both of their second is Wampin' on Texas last weekend at Austin. Yeah, so that, that's close. That somewhere. was pretty good, too. So, okay. Uh, your favorite thing about Hawaii. Your turn first. The beach. The beach. Even though he doesn't surf, the beach. That's the same for me. It's the beach. Yeah, the beach. Yeah, it's pretty special over there. <laughs> really it? supporting that stereotype of the beach, yeah. guys. Because, but you know what? I, I, we, that's why we go over there is to see the beach. Yeah. So you guys just had it. You guys had to come over here to see snow. We have to go over there to see the beach. Yeah, pretty, my, 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 my place, my place on Maui is any place on the Wailea Coast. So, mm -hmm. e either either the Marriott there or the Grand Wailea, any of those. Oh, and yeah. and I just put me there. I'm great. <laughs> I'm just fine. So you got the Utes tomorrow night, and then Baylor in for three uh, in the Big Twelve. Let, let's start with the Utes. It's a, it's a rivalry game. The one, the last one got rained out, right, or snowed out. Yes. So here's the first time against them um, this season. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. It always is because it's Utah, but there are bigger ones that mean more coming Thursday. So how do you balance mm -hmm. the week? I mean, I think we just attack the week like the same, bring the same energy, just. Have to go out there and just play like how we did against how we did against Texas, and just want to be hungry. Just carrying it over, mm -hmm. win to win to win. Yeah, yeah. I would have thought that that, that was a happy plane ride home. I was on the plane ride coming home from West Virginia, where they got one of two, had a chance at the second, uh, and then coming home from uh, the uh, UC Davis, which was a learning experience for everybody. So I would imagine coming home from Austin, it was a pretty good time. It was for sure. Yeah. Big celebration for sure. Well, and the Utes on the road, and then you get eight straight home games. Mm -hmm. So and this this guy will be on the call for all eight of those. Yeah. So let's get some let's get some highlights. Do some great yeah. stuff so let's Dave can stuff. so Dave can brag about you. Show yeah. those seniors how to do it. You know, <laughs> so, with the, you guys are the future. And when you come back on this show, uh, this is the freshman appearance. And as we move through your careers. Uh, for the senior parents, you'll go, hey, you, you guys can just leave, and the two of you will do the show. That's, That's right. the evolution by of, then, by then. of uh, time in front of, the, in front of the camera. So thank you so much for being yeah, here. Yeah, we're great. Yeah. Great, thank great, you. great that you guys would come join us. Good thanks luck tomorrow coming. night, and we'll thank see you, you Thursday. Thank you. At the ballpark, guys. Thank you. Yone, uh, the Hawaiian punch, it's kind of fun to say, but, the, <laughs> but we got the big hitter and the big catcher, and BYU's fortunate to have both of you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. You Appreciate got it. it. You got it. Say hi to your families. We'll send you the podcast, and you can send it to them tomorrow. Okay? All right. <clears throat> awesome. BYU Utah, that's tomorrow night on Pac-12 Network and BYU Radio, and then Baylor and uh, BYU Thursday, Friday, and Saturday afternoon as they get back to the 
Big 12. And uh, fun having them there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, 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 and as you mentioned, that's the future. Those are the young guys. Um, isn't it fun? Two, two guys from the same ward growing up on Maui um, and, and produce two players, e- even though they were different high schools, that come and play at this level in the Big 12 and get a chance to play together. That's really cool. Now they're having so. a chance to, to meet Coach Woods, who's going to join us in just a moment. Yeah. Hey, uh, we want to give you a pitch about Wise Guys. We're coming up on our two-year anniversary. So listen to what we've accomplished so far. And the live streamers know exactly what we're talking about. Our guest list is a who's who among BYU legends. In addition to our live show every Monday, our YouTube page has 552 videos, produced over 385,000 views and 5.1 million impressions. That's crazy. Podcast has 57,546 downloads. Also live as we speak on Facebook and Twitch. And our home base is ysguys.com. We're going to take it up a notch. And uh, we need some sponsors. So if you have a business that wants to jump on board with us, let us know. Reach Jack Hadley at jack at ysguys.com. Pretty easy. Jack and, at ysguys.com uh, is an easy one let's to remember. Let's take this to the next level. I think it's going yeah. to be fun. We've accomplished a lot, and we're just getting started. Uh, and before, you ready to model that? Yeah, let's, let's talk about this. Let's. Uh, Blaine is our model. Miranda, could you put the camera on Blaine? Yeah, there we go. And uh, here's what he's modeling tonight. The fence <laughs> drinks. Contains a special blend of collagen, vitamins, and minerals. These have been shown to reduce, are you holding it up? Reduce joint soreness and reduce injury. Add defense drinks to your day and move and feel better. Save 10% on your order at defensedrinks.com using the promo code WISEGUYS. And this one, this is the collagen electrolyte formulation. I actually sip on this every show. So yeah, I mix it in my water and I sip on this during the show. They have a, a have a nice uh, pre that you can take before you go work out. They have a whole line Defense does of of, uh, um, of products that that you can use whether you're a workout fanatic or not. All good stuff. This collagen electrolyte hydration one just keep you hydrated and keep your your uh, joints and all that function in the way they should. So football news: the transfer portal opens up April 16th. That's just around the corner. As far as our calendar goes, Stadium of Fire is July 4th with the Jonas Brothers. And Dave McCann. AFR's season premiere is on BYU TV July 30th. Fall practice starts, we're thinking, July 31st. Yeah, maybe TJ has a date. Do you have a date yet, TJ? No, no date yet. No date yet. Uh, BYU Southern Illinois on Saturday night, August 31st. That's the plan accordingly, but that's, uh, that's what needs to be on the schedule let's bring in our next guest we've had the kids now let's get the man uh who's going to join us tonight he's the new offensive line coach and the running game coordinator at byu the cougars just wrapped up spring practice it's a perfect time to welcome tj woods to the wise guys how you guys doing welcome to the show yeah and and welcome to provo and all of that stuff you're a veteran now because you've been here like a couple of months i am yeah i feel that way yeah Yeah, what do you like like the most about it uh, the people. Yeah? Yeah, the people. Uh, you know, obviously had a lot of experience in Utah and, and uh, coaching up in Logan for, for right. several years. And, uh, you know, I think that BYU is really just taking that to the next level. Um, the sense of community, the the people, all of that stuff to me is second to none. How, how does it compare? You, you've been to multiple places and we'll kind of doc. Well, let, let's document. We're, well, it's a long grad, grad assistant in New Mexico. Utah State, Wisconsin, Oregon State, Western Kentucky, Utah State again. Yep. Right. UNLV, Georgia Southern. Did we miss any? Uh, no, I think you covered. We, it. we got them all, and then, and then yeah. BYU. Yeah. What What's different or unique about BYU? Because uh, that's been a lot of different stops with different, different and unique. But is there something that's different about BYU than any of those places? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think the 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 players, the the kids that uh, that BYU attracts. You know. Um, talk about people it's it's uh people people make places in my opinion uh i've been a lot of places and i've I've seen good and bad and uh and everything in between uh to be quite honest but uh at at every level uh the people make the place and and i think the best part about byu is i mean the coaching staff and all that stuff we're um on a daily day basis we're, we're with them a lot but the 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 pure joy for me is being around good kids and and kids that uh that welcome your investment your wife, Kelly, did she, um, when she signed up for all this, did she have any idea that she'd be visiting so many places? Uh, yeah, I don't know uh, if this was uh, quite the plan <laughs> we set out, uh, you know, when we when we started this uh, this journey. But, 
she's been a trooper, man. Every every place we go, she's. Uh, I mean, now we've got it down to a science. Uh, you know, hopefully we can we can stop packing our boxes every every couple of years. And but uh, she's been a trooper, man. She's been awesome. That's yeah, you, you you have to have a special life to be in this business, right? So, no question. And so, what does she like about Provo? Uh, I mean, it's the same for her. You know, the community, uh, the people. We we know a lot of people in Utah too, and uh, so that that part's been good for her. And I mean, you know, for her right now, we got eleven and eight at home, two girls, and so yeah. uh, you know, for her, she's she's in her bubble pretty good there, and and trying to make sure everything is taken care of on the home front. Well, eventually the snow is going to be gone for good and it'll warm up and one it, of the best be times of year. Hey, they, they lived in Logan twice, so they, yeah, they, they, they have way worse weather than this. Yeah. Living, <laughs> living up in Cash, it's in Cash Valley, we're, right? We're living in, in Lehigh and, uh, and both of my girls were like, yeah, dad, I just wish it, wish it snowed a little bit more here. Uh, you know, compared to Logan, I said, I don't, yeah, I don't. You know? <laughs> it's all good. We, I, yeah. we lived up North in Davis County for a number of years. And I called down, my folks were down here and, uh, I would say, wow, you know, I was out with a snowblower and they would always go, well, the banana belt down here, we, it really yeah. is warmer yeah. in Utah County. It, it doesn't get the it's, snow. It's so. incredible. Dave mentioned you just finished uh, your first spring practice here. Um, how, how was it in your first spring with BYU? Uh, I mean, it was awesome. Uh, you know, I think we, uh, we improved, uh, you know, there was some, some ebbs and some flows for sure. Some, some ups and some downs, but, uh, I think we, uh, we made some big improvements. I think we identified, uh, you know, our personnel, which I think spring ball is, is, uh, that, that's a big piece. Um, you know, you got to know, uh, what you have. Um, and I think anytime you bring in a new coach, uh, you know, you, you have to kind of assess um, how how they do uh, under my tutelage a little bit, right? Some of the some of the stuff I'm asking them to do is some things that they've never done before. Um, so I think in that sense, it's been it's been very good. It's been good for us to kind of get a feel for each other. Um, you know, it's as much about them getting a feel for me um, and and building that trust um, and, and belief in, in, you know, what I'm teaching and, and how I'm teaching it. I mean, that's a big thing. So I think we're on, on a good, good path there right now. It's interesting. Connor pay sat right in the chair <clears throat> mm -hmm. and we talked and, and, um, by the way, he's a huge fan of yours. Yeah, yeah, I'm is, a huge fan of Connor. Yeah, he is well, a big but, fan. Yeah, he's a huge fan. Like he just <laughs> yeah. he was singing your praises. But one of the things that he identified that he really liked, he, he specifically said that your method of teaching um, was tailored to every individual player. Like, for instance, the way you're coaching up him or talking to him might be different than the way you're talking to Caleb Eddine. Um, And he said he really appreciated that tailored approach. Um, and we thought, wow, that's pretty astute for, for Connor to notice. Sure. Yeah. Um, is that by design? Is that, is that part of your plan, or is that just who you are? Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think there's, uh, you know... Uh Throughout the years of, of doing this, uh, you know, I, I'd like to think I've improved it at my trade too. Um, no different than the players, but um, you know, I, I, I do believe I don't think you can coach everybody the same. You know, there's no uh, th there's no recipe that is a, is a fit all. It's not one size fits all, right? And so, uh, being able to uh, adapt and uh, really get to know the kids individually and their needs. Uh, I think you can obviously uh, connect better that way, um, which that's what this is, right? We're, we're teaching and and uh, we're we're connecting with each other, and I think a lot of that has to do with knowing each other. And so, anyway, for me, I I, I do try. I mean, you know, we're going to treat and teach every player different, uh, and we're going to hold every player to the same standard. And I think that's where the standard will never change. Um, how we uh, approach that standard, how we uh, teach uh, those things can change individually, um, but collectively, as when we take the field, there's there's one standard, and we all have to operate under that. Our pleasure to have BYU's offensive line coach T.J. Woods on the Wise Guys live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and YSGuys.com. When you come into a situation like this, you you've been asked to fix something. You've come in to fix something. How have you kind of pinpointed where to start and? And folks on the stream, uh, we're going to talk about running because you know, running was a struggle last year. Um, and, and so that's the obvious glaring thing to the fan. But but it's a little more detailed for you as the fix-it guy. Where did you start? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a. Um, I've, I've I've been through this uh, multiple times, um, and I, I don't. I think uh, the number one thing uh, that you can get caught up in is is uh, looking in the rearview mirror yeah. uh, instead of looking through the windshield. Uh, you know, I think the rearview mirror is a lot smaller than the windshield for a reason. Um, you know, I think we we have to be pushing forward um, and worried about what's in our control, and obviously that's the present, the now. Um, you know, obviously I've studied a lot of, of what happened last year and, uh, you know, some things that I think I can I can help and, and improve in that setting. But, um, you know, my approach is to not dwell uh, on the past and, and where we've been, more about where we're going and, and be excited about that part. You've been, you've been doing this a long time. We talked a little bit about style. Um, as you come in, what what are these players looking um, to you for? What what do they want from you as the coach? Like, have you been able to identify that? This is what these guys need. This is what they want from me here at BYU. Yeah, I mean, I I think the number one thing um, all players want is uh, somebody to believe in them. Um, I think that's something that's uh, that's pretty sacred and and, uh, and very important uh, with today's athlete. You know, I think with. Uh, with social media, there's uh, definitely more negative than there is positive uh, for a lot of these kids. And, you know, it's it's easy for guys in my generation, I think, to kind of sit back and, and uh, nitpick maybe some of the things that they do um, that might not be ideal. But, uh, you know, we didn't have to, to deal with uh, a lot of the struggles and a lot of the challenges that they have um, in today's day and age, right? So to me, I think the number one thing is is a belief. When you think of this offensive line you've inherited, uh, and now with the transfer portal coming, you'll actually get more hands-on on guys that you think will fit your idea. But you're also the running game coordinator. So how does that work with being the offensive line coach? Well, I mean, I think, you know, the run game coordinator title is really just um, kind of a, a, a title that, that tells everybody that I'm, I'm kind of uh, going to try to coordinate – um, the various schemes that we run and, and try to make them fit um, together and complement each other, right? Um, you know, obviously, A-Rod is, is the offensive coordinator and he's going to call the plays and it's his offense. Um, so, you know, I just I try to have just a, a, a little bit of a, a influence in, in some of the schemes that we're running, maybe change uh, a few things here or there. But, uh, you know, I think it's important to keep the identity of, of what BYU is and um, and what this offense is because it's been dang good for, for several years. Um, I know you haven't had a game situation yet, but, but give us a little glimpse into how you see this working as the run game coordinator. Um, Aaron, he's up in the booth. So, so A-Rod, um, does he go, hey, run play, TG, what do you, what do you got? Or does he go, what, what do you like in this situation, TJ? we got third and one. I want you to be thinking of a third and one play here if we don't get this. Or, or if we're going to go on fourth one. Is that how, how's that communication link going to work, do you think? Well, I, I can't uh, necessarily nail that down right now until we're, uh, we're in that situation. But um, I would anticipate um, it, it going in between series, having communication. That's usually the way. Um, it operates, um, you know, I think something that maybe the, the layman might not fully understand, but, uh, you know, a, a lot of the decisions, um, what to call, uh, in certain situations, they're all made Tuesday through Friday. Right. And that's a collective effort. And we put it on this big elaborate, you got a big ready list. Correct. And right. And so, uh, a lot of those decisions are already made, um, uh, based on our film study and those things, but you know, obviously, like any any good uh, any good battle plan, a lot of them change once you've been uh, punched in the face a little bit sometimes, right? So uh, be, because of that, there will be some adjustments that have to be made uh, throughout the game, and usually that happens in between series. Russ uh, is driving in Indiana tonight and says amen on the rearview mirror comment. Thank, <laughs> thank you, yeah. Russ. And he's driving back from the solar eclipse. I'm not sure you're supposed to even look at the eclipse in your rearview mirror, let alone directly. Right? Yeah, I think you have those, you have those <laughs> special glasses. Uh, BYU Sports Addict says, uh, uh, so TJ, man, we're, we're all behind you all the way. What can be done this year to ha actually have a great running game? And you mentioned you studied last year and saw some things. 
What, what, what do you think can be done between now and August 31st when you run off right tackle, you feel good about it? Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest thing to have in a good run game is to have something that you can hang your hat on, right? You, uh, you can't be a jack of all trades and a master of none. And I think that that's easy in, in today's football. There's a lot of defense. There's a lot of offense. Um, and, and listen, there's good coaches at this level. So um, they're, they're going to be prepared to stop what you do. Right. And the better you are at what you do, the better they're going to be at trying to stop it. Um, and so you have to be multiple. You have to do different things uh, to keep the defense a little bit off guard. But I also believe in um, being able to line up and run something successfully or at least efficient. Uh, efficient for us is a gain of four yards. Right. Mm-hmm. We're, we're looking to gain four yards on um, uh, or gain a first down um, based on the situation. Uh, then that, that we deem those efficient runs. But. Um, to me, you need to have something that you can hang your hat on that you go, listen, here, here it comes. This is what we're doing. And we're still going to go get four yards. And I think we're still trying to find what that is, uh, for us. You know, we've had some real good battles in spring ball. You know, our our defense is, uh, is very interested in stopping the run. They do a, a dang good job of it. And so I think we're in a situation where, uh, you know, iron sharpening iron, uh, on our practice field, which is a good thing, but. To me, that's the main goal is, is having an identity. Who who are you, you know? And and when the chips are down, when things aren't going well, whatever, uh, uh, it's a 60-minute game, right? So not ever, no no game is going to be going well the entire time. Yeah. Football is a game of momentum. And, and does that does that <clears throat> emphasis change based on who you have, I would imagine? I, so BYU, the last few years has kind of been a, a – run a lot of zone. They do run counter and power, but they run a lot of zone. Um and in spring balls, as I, as I got a chance to watch some, seemed like we were running a little more counter and a little more power than I than I think I watched the last couple mm-hmm. years. Is that a result of your expertise in those those different schemes? Is that hey, here's the dudes we have right now, and this is the kind of running backs we have right now. We do a little bit more of this. What what, what drives you know what direction you go with those schemes well i I think initially we drive it as coaches um you know as i mentioned earlier i think being multiple is is an important thing um and i I think running zone schemes and running some gap schemes running some pull plays um you know can keep the defense honest um but i think what what ultimately drives it to answer your question is the players Uh, if if they don't have um the bandwidth to be able to handle multiple schemes, then, um, you know, I can want to run a ton of plays all I want, but without Connor Pay in there making sure everything goes right or Caleb Etienne or, you know, uh, Waylon Lapuaho, then uh, those plays aren't going to work because we're not going to be on the right people and we're not going to be executing the plays with the correct technique either. So to me, that's the, the number one driving factor is how much volume can the players handle and execute versus the volume of defense that you see. You know what uh, seemed to work over the years to make that all function is uh, Tyler Algier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can kind of yeah. run anything if Tyler's the running back, right? Yeah, there's a, a definite, and I've, I've been fortunate to be around several very, very elite backs uh, in my career. But, uh, you know, the guy that, hands, that ha- handles the ball, whether that be in the passing game or the running game, um, Players make plays and yeah. players yeah. win games. You had so. L.J. Martin, Hinkley Rapati uh, coming back off the injury, Miles Davis, a few others. Um, what do you like about this group of running backs? And with the portal opening, will you be looking to add any more to the room? Uh, in the running back room, no. I think we're, we're pretty set where okay. we're at right now. We like what we have. Um, you know, obviously L.J. with what he did last year and um, showed some real, real good stuff in the spring. Um, you know, having Hinkley back is a is a big deal too. He's, I mean, he's a, I don't know, man. I, if he's I, a beast. If I looked like him, I wouldn't own a shirt. I don't think so. <laughs> how, uh, how can somebody you know. that heavy be that shredded? That's yeah. my question, yeah. right? He's, he's, he's impressive, and he's low to the ground, and he's yeah. got those humongous thighs, and yet he's got quickness. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if I'm a safety. I get tired of tackling that guy before, or or Elger. That whole group is a very physical group, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and and you know that's. Uh, that's kind of the idea, you know. You're, uh, I, I believe in in back by committee. I think, uh, you know, you want to be physical when you have the football in your hand, and and I think you can take the the football out of the defense slowly. And there's a softening process that happens in the game of football. It's a 60 minute game, and 
running the ball in the fourth quarter um, should be a lot easier than it is in the first quarter because it's harder to play defense every snap you play. Blaine's going to hit you up with five questions. We'll get you out the door. Sure. Uh, but before we do that, let's do our Cougar Board question of the week. And oh, have yeah. Coach answer Because Coach can help us. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Cougar Board, and uh, our group is getting more and more familiar with it, largest online community of BYU fans, thousands of posts daily. Uh, this question comes from Dilbert, one of their insider subscribers. He thought he was asking us, but... We're going right yeah, to the we're source. We're defer there. to you. We're okay. right to you. Here we go. Here's the question: Keanu Hill moved to tight end this off season. Will they have him line up next to the tackle? If so, how is his run blocking? He's been a great blocking. At, he's been a great at blocking DBs on the outside and downfield. Will he be an effective blocker uh, facing linebackers and defensive ends on the line of scrimmage? You just have like four weeks of seeing that, so. Yeah, I I would say um, I'm very confident in um, what he's shown in in his ability to be physical and and block in the run game. You know, it's a it's a work in progress, right? Blocking, you know, you don't uh, you don't grow up practicing blocking in the park with your parents. So um, it's it's a process. But uh, he's he's doing a really good job. Uh, Great kid, highly competitive. Um, I mean, I I don't he hates to lose uh which is a huge quality in my opinion and and uh, i think we all feed off of that but i think you'll definitely see him uh next to the tackles and and uh and blocking defensive end and linebackers for sure hey, you, have, you have a nice tight end room and they were part of that run game even even the freshmen look good swanson my goodness he looks like a man child <laughs> yes, i can't believe he is he 17 yeah i think he's 17 yeah. years old he's, he looks like hercules he's, out there he's a specimen for sure yeah, yeah. so you got you got a nice tight end room they, and, they, nice they are, and, and they're very pivotal in in what we're trying to do you know uh i think that's something that uh is is becoming more and more rare in college football um the tight end position and and i i, I feel like we're we're very blessed to have several bodies uh in that room that uh that are willing and able all right let's get after him yeah Here we go. Now you heard okay. you heard some of these are the same some different okay, i don't way. know beanie man though i, yeah. Yeah. I looked I, over to tj because I'm, like, I'm, I'm lost i don't know beanie man maybe tj knows no I, he didn't I do know, know maoli and fiji though oh you big, did know big those fans two. of those both of all right, those but beanie really? man's new yeah okay. we're all gonna yeah. have to look up beanie man later <laughs> to see if, see if it's any good so okay your favorite sports movie the program the program. Oh, that's I'm, a good I'm one. I'm going to date myself there, but no, uh, no, that's a great one. Yeah, uh, your was fa- that wait, with the program? What was the premise of that? Um, that was with uh, 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 East Carolina. Uh, it was back in the in the late '90s. Uh, Latimer was on defense, and Mac, and any of the, all those guys. It was as I was growing up. That was pretty influential movie for me. Yeah. Football wise, all right, yeah. yeah. Your favorite singer or band? It's not Beanie Man. We know. No, that. it's not Beanie Man. Oh man, my favorite singer or band. I'm probably gonna have to go with uh, Morgan Wallen. Oh yeah, so you're a country guy. I'm an everything guy. To be honest, I'm so from you're, Southern you're California. Eclectic. So oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, what's uh, what's your any... wife's favorite band singer? Oh, oh, my wife's favorite singer. You're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I'm getting nervous. I haven't been nervous the whole time. This is. Yeah, I don't we'll, want to we'll be see wrong. if we'll see if you get this right. Yeah. Uh, my, my wife's is Tim McGraw, by the way. Yeah. Tim McGraw. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, and John Bon Jovi, that dates us. So. My wife would trade me in for Keith Urban. <laughs> he, we, he's good friends with a guy that writes for Keith Urban, so we've been able well, to go to a couple yeah, of his concerts and right do some in. stuff. Yeah. Well, wouldn't even be with, like, future considerations. I would just be a straight And we've been friends with Brad trade. Paisley for a while, ever since we played West Virginia back there, so we, we kind of have to we got talk some, about Brad Paisley, too. We got some too. friends. But got some yeah. hookups in country. So, uh, yeah. so I, I think she's probably on the same boat with me. Any any country music she's there, good with. There you okay. go. All right. Okay, your favorite breakfast cereal? Oh, breakfast cereal. Okay. Um, my wife would want me to tell you something healthy. Like <laughs> you don't I, have to. You don't have to lie she's about this. She's not here. She, she can have uh, her she, own. She interview. doesn't even know. We're not going to tell her. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to go with probably. Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Lucky Charms. Oh, okay. you know, but there is a Lucky Charms with only marshmallows, too. I don't. I, I love it. Is it called Charms? Uh, is it I, just called Charms? I don't know what it's called. It's a special exactly, edition that comes yeah, out every once in a while, yeah, which yeah. saves me from the work. When I eat Lucky Charms, yeah. I eat all the oats Correct. first, and I leave like five bites of nothing but Charms just soaking in the milk. Exactly. It's the best thing yeah, ever. No question. Those are two good choices. Yes. <laughs> Favorite, like people that come in here and go, oh, rolled oats? Yeah. That's what Danny Ainge yeah. said, rolled like, oats. I was on. like, come on, Danny. 
Yeah. I'm, so. I mean, I'm a pretty, I, I consider myself a professional eater. I don't know. You can't get to look like me without being pretty good. <laughs> at some of that stuff, so. Okay. Your favorite <laughs> football moment favorite ever football moment. Um, 2014, Melvin Gordon set the single game rushing record in the NCAA after three quarters, rushed for 408 yards against Nebraska when we were at Wisconsin. That was, ah, that was pretty fun. Yeah. It started to snow. He was a like special, special quarter. player, right? Oh, yeah, he's incredible. And, and those, those play, you know, the linemen too were. We're a real joy, man. I was real fortunate to be around some some really good players. Yeah, Wisconsin's just no. I mean, they're known for just producing NFL offensive linemen. And yeah. No different when you were there. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was a fun time. And running it against Nebraska had yeah. an extra sweet. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know why it is, good. but everyone enjoys beating Nebraska. Yeah. When yeah. we were back there, BYU beat them on a hail mary. Yeah. Um, it was I, there was just a different level of satisfaction. Oh, I don't yeah. know what it is. Yeah. They've never done anything bad to us, but no, but they yeah. but in the still felt they, more. Hey, we gotta give they haven't been good lately, but they've got a tremendous history. There's no question. They have a tremendous and their Tom fans Osborne. are actually great. Yeah, their fans are. are great. They are. So they good. deserve better than what they've had the yeah, last seven sure seasons or yep. so. Yeah, for sure. And you sort of answered this already, but this can be some, something different. You know, your favorite thing about and it doesn't have to be about BYU football, your favorite thing about BYU, period. Hmm. Yeah, I I uh I just had this uh this cookies and cream milk from the creamery. Oh, yeah. Yes. There's some good stuff in there. Man. Uh, I think right now that's my favorite thing about PYU. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I have cookies to cookies and, I have and to cream start milk or not or ice cream. The, it was the, milk. The milk, yeah. The milk. I, I don't know. I've never had it before, but it was go over to the other showtime. counter and they freeze that thing in ice cream and it's it's yeah, even it's, it's even really, better. Yeah. Yeah. And and you you spend enough time in Logan. The creamery in Logan is really oh, yeah, too. Absolutely. Like and, yeah. and and but it's yeah. not you know, BYU's is not gonna take a second you know, there's this fight because hey, Cash Valley, there's cows just up in Richmond, you know. <laughs> like it doesn't make a difference. B- BYU yeah. is still yeah, it's pretty right there, toe to toe with with yeah. uh, with, Kat, with yeah. the U- Utah State's creamery. So LJ, LJ Martin's going to be on the show next week. What's a, one question you want us to ask him? Uh, one question you can ask him. Ask him if he knows how to use his weapon. Oh, okay. We'll ask him. That. Ask Get Co- that down there. Tom Coach Woods asked him that to use his. Got it. Weapon. Yeah. My hey my by the way, my favorite coach at BYU is Coach Fowler. Gavin is my son. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, we love yeah. Gavin. All yeah, right. These guys hardly work together. Offense, defense. Yeah. It's like two different yeah. worlds. Two different worlds. We so promised to have you. Yeah, cool. Gavin's my That's my youngest cool. son. So very cool. He does a great job. Yeah. Does so, a great job. He he thinks the world of you. He's yeah. he's con- yeah, he everybody like, does. You're like well, everyone's well, best well, friend. No, I, but, yeah, I was talking to New Year coming on and Gavin's he told me a lot of great things. He's about how about culture and some of the things you've brought and some of the, yeah, he's, he's loving you, having you there. Yeah. So, well, he, and he knows cause they got to go defend you guys. So. Yeah. Well, they're doing a heck of a job over there. I know that. So that's cool. Hey, that's we cool. promised to have you out of here at seven. You've got a party to attend to. So go to it. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, we no, appreciate we hope it you come back. Much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Anytime. The well, game I'm doesn't tip for, out. the game doesn't tip for 20 minutes. You got I, time. I know. I know. I'm, Purdue I'm, I'm or UConn on your way out. Who you got? I'm going to go with the big guy at Purdue. You like big, big men win championships. That's the bottom line. And, and, it's, so. and it Purdue's the one team that has the bigs to hang with UConn's yeah. bigs. Yeah. So this would be fun. I who, like that guy. So who, we'll who's see. Who's the biggest on your offensive line? Is it Etienne? Yeah. Six, eight, yeah. Uh, two. Yeah. He or Kaim. Kaim's. Or Kaim. Yeah. Those are big man. boys. He's, he's, he's big dude. Brain's six, eight. And, yeah. And he's putting a lot of weight on he since, is, yeah. he's since been, he was first here. He's been doing a good job. Yeah. He's he's really been trying, uh, you know, to bust his tail on the weight room. I, I've been telling people, Kate. Caleb looks like a different guy to me this spring. Yeah, he's, yeah he he's looks cut, good. He's cut some weight. He's he's down. Yeah, a he looks bit. good. He's a little bit better. So he's yeah, yeah, doing a good job. Doing yeah, a good okay. job. thank you. Yeah, good. Yeah. Thanks so much, Coach. Appreciate it. T.J. Woods, offensive line coach, running game coordinator, uh, making his debut on the Wise Guys the first time, but not the last time. Yeah, we'll keep. We have you back. We have we'll you see back. over on. Uh, we'll see you over on campus. Yeah, and uh, we'll but, see you at the creamery. Yeah, yeah. we'll see you at the creamery, <laughs> the milk line and the ice cream line. Thanks, TJ. Thank you, Coach. Well, we learned a lot from Coach Woods. Yeah, and it's been fun. We've been eager to have him on, and and now a week removed from uh, spring camp, I th- I think we got some good insight. Yeah, great stuff. Some great stuff. Now he's had time to think about what he's got. Yep, yep. That's good it's, stuff. And, and guess what? It all seems pretty encouraging. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, and, and go what Connor said about him. We, we've seen firsthand. Yeah. You know, you want to play for that guy. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Connor was very complimentary, and you can see why. Next week, so. Darius Lassiter is going to be here, and L.J. Martin will get their take on uh, 
spring football now that week removed and what they're what they're already busy doing to get ready for the season opener. Brian Logan will be here as well. On April 22nd, Matt Bushman and Brandon Doman yeah. will be on the show. Right. We look forward to that. Lee Johnson's going to join us at the end of the month. Just just get everybody just get yourself ready to go for April 29th because when Lee Johnson comes, he'll he'll bring the energy. <laughs> He's going to bring the energy for sure. There's a lot going on. Let's do some more football. There's yeah. some fun stuff to talk about. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Van Noy, by the way, uh, we send our heartfelt congratulations to the Van Noys. He signed a two-year deal to return to the Ravens with a reported $9 million, according yeah. to ESPN. Had a career-high nine sacks last season with Baltimore. Now, our Wise Guys interview almost went two hours with Kyle. That's at ysguys.com. Uh, we encourage you to go there when you have some time and, and just listen to him. And one uh, of the things he talked about, and but and it, it's just so funny that we got into this conversation and and he pointed out, but it didn't come across as arrogance in any way, shape, or form, that every defense he's ever been on in the National Football League gets better after he's been there. Then, and it was the way we got to that. We asked him a question about, you know, what does he take great pride in? And he's like, every defense I've played on has improved when I joined the team. <laughs> and, That's and, true. And but he wasn't saying it's because I'm so great. What he was saying was, I understand how to get everybody to play around me, and I, and I understand how to lift a team and that's why the ravens are signing him i mean he's, he's he's a veteran but he's a great leader and he raises everybody's level of play around him and that's the guy you want on the team yeah you know, yeah so. and uh and he was great last year yeah sure was sure um was. so van noy back with the ravens and the last thing i saw we had, we were tweeting back and forth but the last thing i saw was he was trying to decide does he want number 53 or number 50 and of course he said he'd love number three i don't know if that's available yeah uh, it'd be great to see him run around in number three again. I don't. Doesn't the NFL have rules about backers? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the word they, is. They, the NFL is strict about it. Hey, your socks have to be pulled up. You yeah. have to do or this. You, you have, have to have a certain number. And so all maybe that. he has to be in the fifties. I think he might have to mm -hmm. be. So Zach Wilson. Here's another guy. So we're trying to figure out his future. I'm sure he is too. Maybe he knows what his future is. If he doesn't get traded, the Jets are just going to keep him. Yeah. We already know that. But I, I thought he was going to go to the Chiefs. And then the Chiefs signed uh, Wentz as the backup to Mahomes. And so where are the options now? Everyone's picked up somebody. Even the 49ers picked I, up Dobbs. I thought there was a chance he was going to go to Minnesota. Maybe maybe Minnesota. They still haven't figured yeah, out. Yeah, Jaron Hall there and, and a, a couple of other backups. But uh, is he going to be on the Jets again? Oh. <sighs> Just and he, the, and he just, won't play. Just the thought of that makes, you know, I feel like I have to have a drink right now. <laughs> because it's just the thought of that it's, makes me ill. The Jets make make that happen. We don't know what's going to happen. I thought, uh, you know, I thought somebody would have jumped already to yeah. get him. Uh, he's unless such, they're he's just such waiting. a raw talent. He hasn't been developed. And, they got it, they had, and he's making $5 million, So yeah. it's almost like they're waiting for the Jets to pay him, cut him, and then all of a sudden. And, but I think they made we'll it pretty, pretty clear. Hey, we think he's talented. We're not just going to give him away. So Right. Um, if we can't find a suitable trade where we get what we want for him, we'll, we're going to keep him. So. The, the draft, by the way, is at the end of the month, April 25th through the 27th in Detroit, right. which leads us to this next question. We're going to go down memory lane here for a moment. Uh, Keaton Slovis had a great uh, pro day at the NFL Combine. Mm -hmm. uh, could he be the third straight BYU quarterback to get either drafted or signed with a team? Right. That would be three straight, which hasn't happened since... Um, Robbie Bosco, right? Because well, it was Robbie, before him Steve, before him Jim, before him Mark. So there was yeah, a run well, there. I was going to say, it's more than three. But since that because run. Because you went, you went cons like straight, quarterback, quarterback. Yeah. Since picks, that run, though, there hasn't yeah, been Yeah, Giff, three. Mark, Jim, Steve, Robbie, all right in a row drafted. So there was an interesting thing on pro football focus. Uh, the most quarterbacks selected in the NFL draft. And USC was number one with 18. Stanford was number two at 18. Or USC had 19. USC had 19. Stanford yeah. with 18. Ohio State, 17. Florida State was four all time with 15. And then things get a little tight. LSU and Tennessee are tied for fifth with 14. Notre Dame and BYU tied for sixth, having put 13 quarterbacks in the league drafted. Yeah, it's... When they and and remember when when BYU went um, back to back to back to back, everybody was just calling BYU quarterback U mm -hmm. because that just doesn't happen very often outside of USC. 
right? Yeah. Um, we're, we're just every new quarterback was drafted. And when I came to BYU, it was just like, yeah, you got you get the starting job here, you get drafted. And so it was absolutely quarterback you. And then there was a little bit of a break. And then, then you had Ty, Heisman Trophy winner, and, and drafted. Um, and and then, then they had a little bit of a run there for, for a while with where they had some gaps. But, but enough guys that, that uh, you know, BYU is still considered one of the top quarterback factories in, in all of college football. So we have the list of the 13 BYU quarterbacks who were drafted. Everyone can name probably 11. And then yeah. it's like, okay, who are these other I ones? Think, I think I could have... If you would have just, without even telling me, with no research, I think I, I think I would have got all but one. I think I could have gotten twelve. I had to go all the way back because I wasn't sure about Virgil Carter. Yeah. So he went to the Bears. Gary Scheide went to the Bengals. Gifford Nielsen went to the Oilers. He gave the op- opening prayer at conference over the weekend. Mark Wilson went to the Raiders. Jim McMahon went to the Bears. Steve Young went to the USFL, and then the Bucks. He would have been the number one overall draft pick in the NFL had he not already signed with the USFL. And so. Robbie went to the Packers, and then there was a little bit of a break, and then in came these other names. Yeah, then Ty Detmer goes to the um, to the Packers. John Walsh, drafted by the Bengals. That's the one I forgot, and I shouldn't have forgot. He threw for a bazillion yards this season. And he year. left early, remember? Right. He left early. So Bengals, Brandon Doman, the Niners. Um, John Beck, the Dolphins, Zach Wilson, the Jets, and then Jaron Hall, the Vikings. Yeah. That's the 13. That's a pretty good group. That's, that's tied that's, for sixth most in college football history. That's an amazing, that's an amazing group and an, an amazing legacy. It really is. So, so here's the next question. And then I look at that and I'm just like, really? I was here right in the middle of that <laughs> with Jim, Steve, and Robbie. How did that happen? Yeah. Right. Let me just tell you, you I were should, an outstanding backup. I would have been better. I would have been better to be at Texas <laughs> or Arizona State or someplace. BYU was quarterback you. So who were or are the three best BYU quarterbacks in the NFL? To have gone on and competed. Like it, the first one is like a no brainer. If anyone wants to argue this one with me, good luck. Because he's the first battle Hall of Famer. Steve Young's won. That's right. not even a question. Three three Super Bowl rings with the Niners, the Super Bowl MVP, the league MVP. When he left, he was the all-time leading uh, pass efficiency rated quarterback in the history of the National Football League. Jim McMahon, probably number two. I'll take Jim number he two. Won the, he's got two Super Bowl rings, one with the Bears, one as a backup to Brett Favre and the Packers. Yeah. And by the way, I think Jim McMahon's the greatest college quarterback ever. Yeah. And, and, and Steve would probably... Because Steve and I have had this conversation a number of times where we talk about that. I think Steve might even agree with that. Steve was a great college quarterback, but I think he'd give the nod to Jim in college. But then he takes the nod in the pros, no question. Right? Number three, however, that is one's, a tough one. That one's... I went back and forth, and you don't have to agree no, on this I, list. I'm, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you some people that we should consider, but... But I, I put Taysom Hill number three uh, when you consider he's thrown for over 2,300 yards. And 11 touchdowns and rushed for over 2,100 yards and 20 touchdowns. That isn't even counting playing tight end, kickoff return man, uh, the tackles on special right. teams. But as far as, um, and then I had gift number four. At first I had gift number three and I thought, but uh, but Taysom when he's, has done so much more. Yeah, T- Taysom has done some things that nobody's and, ever done in the league. Right. Like but technically, he's, he's got some. Qu- he's already has some stuff in the Hall of Fame from the record he just set, right? Yeah. Um, and so he's very, very visible. He's one of the most recognizable players as a utility player in the National Football League. But but I didn't have him three because we said quarterback. But technically, he went in as a quarterback. That's true. And he still he still plays quarterback. And he's still got a bunch of his yards and, and tight running end, and passing and slot back and as wide a quarterback. Receiver. So yeah, so I went back. I went back and forth on. He's so much more than a quarterback. But that's what they got him as. So, and and by the way, all these folks have been on our show except for Jim. We got to get Jim on the show. I'll see if I can get him on this summer. Um, but Mark Wilson's my three. Yeah. Yeah. First round draft pick. I love the story Mark told us here, where he talked about when he said, "Hey, can I tell you guys a story that I haven't told anybody in forty years?" And we're like, "Yeah, Mark, it's just us right here." Was <laughs> he, that the special teams play? No, when he quit. Oh, yeah, that's But right. he went in and quit. He went in and quit. Right. He was quitting before his senior year because of the cho- right. coaching changes. And Lavelle told him to hang on. He was going to fix things. Brought Doug Scoville back, which kept Mark here and kept Jim here. Um, and then Mark goes on to be a first-team All-American and a first-round draft pick the next year. But 10 seasons, two-time Super Bowl champ, 14,391 yards and 86 touchdowns. 
Like none of the other quarterbacks be, are close to that other than Steve and Jim, right? So I have Mark as my, as my number three. Um, and then just for longevity's sake, I, I have to throw Ty Detmer in there at, like at, at, at five, right? Or at four or five. Because uh, Ty, he was six teams, but 14 seasons in the NFL is remarkable. 6,351 yards, 39 touchdowns. Yeah. And, and then the one that I don't know quite where to put him because it, it's a while ago, but you, you, when you're talking about Ty and Giff and these guys, you have to throw Verge in there. you got to throw Virgil Carter in there. Played eight seasons in the NFL, threw for 5,063 yards, 29 touchdowns. Um, so, so to me... It goes Steve, Jim, and then Mark's numbers are just so much more. Like, think about it. Ty played 14 seasons and threw for 6,300 yards. Um, Mark played 10 seasons and threw for 14,000 yards um, and, and, and 86 touchdowns. So I, I got to give Mark the nod for number three, and I'm not quite sure where to put Taysom in there. I, If I'm just putting players with impact in the NFL, yeah. Taysom's like – top three period well i think you factor that in and you think about what Taysom's done Taysom's done more than any of them yeah in in the variety of positions and stuff right Taysom, like what i said Taysom's done some things that nobody else has ever done so i i don't know quite quite where to put them but i th- mark's underrated i i think a little bit and people forget because it's a little bit longer ago yeah but but mark was a really good nfl quarterback and by the way uh, here's a quick list of some notable undrafted cougars uh, Chad Lewis went to three Pro Bowls. <laughs> yes. Chris Hoke has two Super Bowls. Ryan Denny, a Pro Bowl uh, in 2010, 2012. Danny Sorensen, Super Bowl. Matt Bushman will be on the show in two weeks, two Super Bowls. Yeah, who's the best undrafted player in BYU history and the NFL? Uh, I mean, Chad, Chad had a phenomenal career. Chris, Chris Hoke? Chris Hoke, I think. I think, I think you're right. Well, and my, then my question was, was, was Kiesel drafted? I don't know. I think I was, he must have been because I was just looking at undrafted and I didn't see his name there. Because Kiesel, if he was undrafted, like he yeah. was dominant. The, the, the whole fear of the beard thing for yeah, years. These are guys that came in without any promises. Yeah, and, 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 and if Kiesel was drafted, he wasn't one that they thought was going to be as good as he was. But he and Hoke together on the Steelers, that's the best BYU combo ever. And then our, our good buddy who also gave an opening prayer in conference the other day, Bye. Vi Sikahema, who's a pro bowler, um, um, and, uh, but, but Vi was drafted late, late round draft pick. So, yeah. So those were the undrafted, but, but Chad, Chad Lewis, Chris Hoke, Ryan, Denny, those are, yeah. Chad Lewis, three Pro Bowls, but Chris Hoke, yeah, I mean, he, I think he, he had a long, illustrious career. Um, president he's got Hoke, a kid in the say. program and he was just here yeah. in town. I saw in his, yeah. he posted a couple of pictures, um, here during spring yeah, drills ho- of ho- some sort. Ho- for the undrafted guys, like he was a mainstay for a decade. A really, really great player. All right, let's tackle basketball. John Calipari, uh, I think it's formalized. They're formulating it right now, leaving yeah. Kentucky for the head job at Arkansas. BYU's Mark Pope won a national championship at Kentucky under Rick Pitino. Uh, Pope's name's on the deep list of potential candidates to replace Calipari, but how realistic is it now, there are a bunch of guys on there that aren't going. They're too expensive or they're not going to go to Kentucky because they got sweet gigs. But then you get down the list and suddenly it's like, um, well, maybe they would consider Mark, but only after this guy says no, this guy says no, and this guy says no. Um, but he's on the list. And so he's on the list. That means people are talking about him. Yeah, and uh, you think about there's some really high-profile guys on that list, right, that, that they talk about. Um one of which is Rick Pitino. Yeah, I think I don't know if they're going back down that road, but but he's on that list. Like, hey, he's it's, on the it's, list. It's, if you're Rick, on the list, you're Rick, on the list. Rick's wife and Rick's always says, "I never should have left that job." Does he come back? Does he come back? Do they get the Bulls coach who was at Florida? Um, but, it, but but these are these are big big names that they're talking about. But all of them might just go. You know what? The expectations are so. Why would high I want there. that? I'm making enough money here. It, it, it's kind of like like UCLA. Um, is one of the premier programs in the history of college basketball. It's hard to win a national championship at UCLA, but the expectations are you should win one all the time. Yeah. Because during the Wooden era, you just kept winning them. Like, in fact, there was one time when you won for three straight years and didn't lose. Yeah, yeah. And I, I have a feeling, uh, while possible, I think if the Cougars had gotten to the Sweet 16 or the yeah. Elite Eight, 
then uh, Kentuckyites would feel so much better about getting a coach who's yeah. won in the NCAA tournament because they're getting rid of a coach who hasn't won in the last five years, and that's what they're mad about. Yeah. And it, so I don't know. It, it's hard. It, it's The expectations for Kentucky are you're in the Final Four, and then you should win a national championship every couple of years. That's a tough thing to live up to, even, they, if, even if you're Kentucky. Because guess what? Carolina doesn't do it anymore. Duke doesn't do it no. anymore. And they'll pay a lot, but but that's your burden. Yeah. All the time. Du- Duke fans think they should win the national championship every year, yeah. and they just don't anymore. No. Yeah. No, and so... UConn and, seems to be the only one that actually continues to dominate year after year. They look good. They look yeah. good. We'll see what happens later tonight. But um, And another thing that Mark Pope's got to do is he's got to find a new assistant. Yeah. Uh, after his recruiter, defensive specialist... Cahill Fennell took the job at uh, UT Rio Grande Valley in Edinburgh, Texas. Wanted to be a head coach, got the opportunity, and yeah. he's a head coach. Well, and he did he did such a great job. It was great recruiting, um, great X's and O's guys. Uh, the players loved Cahill. Uh, I thought he had made major contributions to this this program. So he's going to be missed, and that's a tough one. Mark's going to have to go out and and uh, and backfill that because he he had a major role. Big recruiter, yeah, big time really recruiter good. for for BYU. So that's what's going on with basketball. We'll see what tomorrow brings. You, you know what though? Those are the kinds of guys you got to get. Yeah. Like e- even though you know Cahill Fennell wants to move on and go be a head coach, that's a good formula. So who's the next guy that wants to go on to be a head coach that Mark can bring in and bring that kind of energy and all of that, and. A certain amount of turnover in your staff is a good thing if you got great people coming through. Think about in the old days of BYU football, all of the great coaches that came through here. Like right. Lavelle's coaching tree is ridiculous. That's because he wanted to bring talented people, and he knew they wanted to go on, and he fostered that. And that's so. It's not a bad thing that Cahill's gone. You just got to try to find somebody that has that same kind of skill and energy and all that to come be the next guy that comes in for a couple of years. You just wish they stay two or three years. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see how that one goes, yep. but that'll be a tough, uh, a tough one to, to replace. Yep. Men's volleyball, 16 and eight, seven and five. That's their final regular season record. They split the weekend series at USC stay at number six in the polls. So the MPSF tournament's coming up Wednesday, April 17th through the 20th. It's also at USC. Mm -hmm. Um, Watch BYU Sports Nation for details. We'll have more next week once we find out who and when they're playing. But um, it's tournament time now for men's volleyball. Yeah, and it's a a young team. They're they're number six in the country, and they're just going to get better over the next two years. So I don't know. They don't seem like a national championship contender this year, um, but they do down the road. But who knows? They get hot. Get hot. They're going to need to get hot, too, because UCLA's in that Isn't this funny? Yeah. They're just, they're just so young. They're only ranked number six in the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, but you only get the four, right? Yeah. And they need to expand that yeah. out. But um, yeah. So they got to do really, really well yeah. at the MPSF tournament. So um, softball's 21 and 16, 4 and 11 in the Big 12. Um, Central Florida swept BYU in Orlando over the weekend. Uh, this week at Utah Valley. So a game here in the Valley. Uh, that's Tuesday, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock Mountain. That's on ESPN+. Plus. Um, Hunter Ava, I wrote about her in the right. Deseret News today, Deseret.com. She's, she is a home run waiting to happen and hit that grand slam to beat Houston. Sports Center top 10. Last week. Yeah. And um, yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal first baseman. And uh, you can read more about her at she, Deseret.com. She needs to be phenomenal because they're playing at number one Oklahoma <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thursday through Friday uh, and Saturday. So three Thursday time, through Friday. Three time defending national champion. Yeah, five o'clock Mountain on Thursday and Friday. Noon on Saturday. They're all on Sooner Vision and on ESPN Plus. They're thirty-five and three. Dave. Yeah, they're bugged because Texas beat them a couple times over the weekend. Yeah, and so so now BYU's going to get them hopping mad. Oh man, timing's everything. Yeah, track and field. The national rankings will be out tomorrow. The the last poll had the women number four and the men number twenty-two. This week, the Brian Clay Invitational in Azusa, California. The Pacific Coast Invitational and the Beach Invitational. So again. They're, They're spreading spanning out. Spanning the globe. Uh, divide and conquer out there. Gymnastics. Um, BYU defeated Boise State in a tiebreaker uh, to win the play-in meet. So it's like the the first four in college basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, the Cougars finished third in the four-team second round. Arkansas Regional uh, bring their season to an end. So they pr- pretty good season for, for BYU and gymnastics. Yeah, and it was great that they got out of the first yeah. day. And the way they did it was quite dramatic. Yeah. 
and uh, a great memory. In golf, the BYU women are in the Texas showdown today and tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday. Next is the Big 12 Championships, April 18th through the 20th at the Houston Oaks Country Club. And for the men, uh, April 15th through the 17th uh, is the Western Collegiate um, and, uh, and Santa Cruz, California. That's a big one. Uh, former Cougar Peter Quest, by the way, top 10 finish at the Valero Texas Open on the PGA Tour. Nice. How about that? We played with Peter before. Make so. some money. Yeah, and then former Cougar and former Master Champion Mike Weir is back in the field for Augusta later this week. Weirzy. Yeah, let's hope he can. Let's hope he can put on a put on a yeah. show. It's so hard for the older guys uh, the course, to they, survive that course. And they made that course so long, and it's fast, and it's yeah. It's, Tiger's going to be in it. I'm excited to watch it. I yeah, love the Masters. I love it too. It's one of my favorites. Tennis. Two, two years ago, I was there. Not this year. BYU women now 15 and six, six and five. Drop matches at number 23 Oklahoma and at number seven, uh, number eight Texas. That was a tough swing. Right. Uh, this week Cincinnati is in Provo Thursday. West Virginia's in Provo on Saturday, and the Big 12 championships get going April 17th through the 20th in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Things starting to wind down. Yeah, they are. And BYU men are 11 and eight, 0 and five. They drop matches at number three TCU. And number four, Central Florida, a bunch of ranked teams on the men's side. Um, this week, BYU at Texas Tech on Saturday. The Big 12 championships are April 19th through 22nd in Stillwater. So it's the, the women's followed right by the men's. Women's volleyball, since we were last together, they released their 18-game Big 12 schedule. It includes the four new schools, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, and Colorado. For the first time ever, a Big 12 schedule has been released that didn't have Texas yeah. or Oklahoma in it. Crazy. they off to the SEC. So 15 uh, teams in women's volleyball. BYU is going to face every one of them once, four of them twice. The Big 12 opener is Colorado at BYU on September 26th. Utah is at BYU on October 19th. And then BYU is at Utah on November 8th, which is the night before the BYU-Utah football game. Is it going to foreshadow what's going to happen on the Saturday? That's going to be quite a weekend, that's for sure. By the way, the significance of this one is uh, it's BYU's first conference home-and-home series against Utah since 2010 when they were both in the Mountain West. Yeah. So it's the the circle has finally come to an end. You would assume that men's basketball, when the schedule comes out, will have a home-and-home with Utah. Yeah. yeah. And soccer won't because they just do ones. Right. But... uh, We'll see how the rest go. But that was the first one where it's like, yeah. hey, we're hey, back. A home and home. It's all back. Hey, by the way, Lauren Guestin played in that women's college all-star game over the weekend. A double-double, 15 points, 15 rebounds. Yeah, she can rebound against anybody. She can rebound in the WNBA, believe me. So, yeah, it's amazing. Congrats to her. That's great to go play among the best. First of all, she did her rebounds in the WCC, and everyone said, yeah. Oh, can she do so it in the Big see. 12? She goes to the, w, the Big 12, leading rebounder, in the country. leads the country. And so why not go to the WNBA and get some rebounds? She can do it. She can do it. So Fantastic. All well, right, on this day, April 8th. Yep. We start with 1893. The Critic reports that ice cream soda is America's number one drink. Have you had an ice cream soda? Yeah. I haven't had one. Now, a root beer float, I guess, is technically an, That's ice, an cream ice cream soda. soda. Yeah. But, you know, I've never been one to go, hey, here's a Dr. Pepper. I'm going to pour that over... Yeah. You know, I, I, root, root beer cream. floated to me is what what we're talking about here. Yeah, it seems like a, a root oh. beer float. Yeah, but if I like Coke, people put Coke over vanilla ice cream and make an ice cream soda. But I haven't done that. Coke float, I haven't done. I've done a root beer float and I've done a cream soda float. Yeah, have There's, you ever done a Dr Pepper float? No, I haven't either because I haven't wanted to waste a Dr Pepper. Well, well we're gonna have to try. But if it, it doesn't work, next out. time we're on the road, we're gonna try a Dr Pepper float. 1969 on this day, the first Major League Baseball game featuring a team from Canada, the Montreal Expos. Beat the New York Mets 11 to 10. Do the Mets just lose to everybody? Yes. So in 19, not every year though. Sometimes they're good. 1974, Hank Aaron hits home run number 715 to break Babe Ruth's home run record. Man, that was tonight. 1974 on April 8th. On this day in 1979 was the final episode of All in the Family with Archie Bunker. 205 episodes of that they made. You couldn't make that show today. No. There's no way you can make no, that show in not. today's environment. So. But back then, it was oh, a hit. Oh, yeah. Bum, ba, dum, bum, bum, bum. 2022. So we're, we're like recent history yeah, now. we're jumping right up. The U.S. Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences bans Will Smith from attending the Oscars for 10 years after he slapped host Chris Rock during the 2022 ceremony. 
And now, now Will Smith's kind of fallen off the planet. Well, he, you know, he always does these ones where he's with aliens. So. <laughs> yeah. So that was something. He did, did the Men in Black. Band. He was kind of off the planet on that. And then we watched, uh, we watched Independence Hitch. Day. He was kind of dealing with people off the planet then. We watched Hitch the other night. You know, so it was funny. Funny, so funny. funny. Good movie. But, but um, yeah, he's, he's still working through some yeah, of that stuff. Yeah, working through some stuff. Um, birthdays. Born on April 8th, 1460. Juan Ponce de Leon, the explorer, discovered Florida. Do you think when they got to Florida and they pulled up there um, and they saw all the alligators, they didn't want, why didn't they just get back on their boat and leave? No, they, they looked at it and they said, you know what? If we can discover this, eventually Walt Disney will come down here <laughs> and he'll turn this swamp into something magical. Okay. <laughs> That's what they were he thinking. He was a visionary. In 1918, Betty Ford... Um, uh, it's her birthday, 1918, Betty Ford, the first lady and uh, founder of the Betty Ford Clinic. Yeah, did a lot of good in her life. Yes, yeah, she did. John Havlicek, the Boston Celtic, was born on this day in 1940. 1949, April 8th, Jim Lampley, the boxing announcer. He was uh, he was and still is the big fight he announcer. Is. Howard yeah. Cosell before him and then Jim Lampley. Yeah. If Lampley's on the call, it's a big fight. It's a big fight. I got to know uh, and experience that in Vegas all those years. Those who died on April 8th, uh, a couple of notables, uh, 1973, Pablo Picasso. Yeah, I've been to the Picasso Museum. 2013, Margaret Thatcher, British Prime Minister. Our yes, Wise Guys right. Inspirational Quote of the Week is from Margaret Thatcher, yeah. speaking at BYU in 1996 How about that? at the so, Marriott Center. She says, those pilgrim fathers came with the faith that infused the whole nation. Yours is the only nation founded on liberty. And you're, and you're founded on liberty because of that faith. So, so that's the British prime minister coming over here. Talking on faith. And saying, hey, here's how this all worked out. Yep. And why it did. And uh, it's great to have her speak yeah. at the Marriott Center. Our special thanks to BYU offensive line coach and running game coordinator TJ Woods. I thought he gave us a, a taste of... The challenge at hand. Yeah. He's come in here to fix the offensive line. And it, it's and, kind and of a crude help, way help to say game, it, but yeah. I thought he gave a good good deep answer on that. He did a great job. And then thanks to baseball players, Cahill Alloy and uh, Keone Painter. It was fun to have Both, those guys the, here. The, 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 the Maui, you call them Maui Punch, one, two. They're kind of soft-spoken guys. Yeah. And, uh, and so it was fun to put a microphone in their face and yeah, ask really them fun. questions they didn't know were coming. So. Next week, uh, BYU receiver Darius Lassiter, running back LJ Martin, and BYU TV football analyst Brian Logan. So we got a big show next yeah, week. That'd be great. Looking forward to it. Podcast will be up tomorrow. Please share it with your friends. Uh, and um, and remember, we're 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 now uh, we're looking for some sponsors. So if you have yep. know a business or or own a business that want to come be a part of wise guys. This is the window of opportunity now that we're nearing our two years and, and ready to get serious that the previous two years have just been practice and, and now it's go time. I'm Dave McCann. That's Blaine Fowler. We're the wise guys. Uh, let's have a great week. And, um, and you know what? There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff to talk about next week. Oh yeah. The beauty of it is we're not sure what that is yet, but, 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 but there'll be happen. something and it'll be fun. <laughs> it'll so happen. We'll see you next week.